Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, coming at you from the Nerd Cave, and I wanna show you guys a new addition. Well, it's been here for actually about a month and a half. It's taken me a while to get around to the video, but I have been using the system. I absolutely love it, but this is a rack mount server created by Puget Systems. Now, we got a lot of sponsors on board to build this bad boy. We got Intel supplying the CPUs, we have Crucial supplying the memory, Samsung providing the storage, EVGA supplying the GPUs, and Asus providing this awesome rack mount chassis. Now we're gonna go through, tear this thing apart, and I'm gonna show you guys all of the innards, and later on in another video, we're gonna show you all the benchmarks and how I'm using it for cryptocurrency mining and Adobe Premiere rendering of video. But I just wanna show you guys the massive build that is right here before me and the power that it represents. And ultimately, this is gonna be mounted in my crawl space here in the Nerd Cave where hopefully I don't have to listen to it because it sounds like a 747. Now, anytime you order a computer from Puget Systems, it comes with a manual. This manual contains everything on the system all the way down to the team that assembled it, what everybody did, what every part in the system does. They also take photography of each system. They do thermal imaging of each system to show you how thermally efficient the system is. And they go through and tell you how to troubleshoot everything and include all of the software that you need in the back. And if you do have a problem that arises, they tell you every single employee what they did in the assembly QC, install testing and packaging of the system. And it's all right here in the manual along with benchmarks indicating the performance and speed of every single benchmark that you could possibly think of. It's actually a really cool addition to buying a computer from them because here in this manual, you're confident that you have everything you need to get the system completely reinstalled, get support from them, which when you buy a system from Puget, you get support forever and a day. You also get free upgrades if you buy the parts from them. It's a really, really cool deal and their customer service has always been awesome. Also, when you buy one of their systems, you get a box included that contains all the little extra tidbits that were left over, like the power cable, that's, that's probably important. Uh, and another, uh, what is it, VGA cable? Nobody uses VGA anymore, I don't know why that's in there, but hey, it probably came with something. And we have the official invoice for the computer indicating a total system cost of $12,727, of which I paid none because- Sponsored. Also included, it looks like we have a lot of extra little uh, rubber pieces. We got extra screws. This is all the extra hardware, nuts and bolts and everything you need for the server. And it even came with the rails for when I mount it in a rack. And ultimately I am gonna mount it in a rack, not I rack, a rack. And that's gonna be in my crawl space. And that's gonna be a separate video I'm gonna show you because I'm gonna put a UPS in it. We're gonna put a network switch in it and get it all set up and wired through the wall so that I have direct IO to it, hopefully through 10 gigabit because I wanna use that for all the video editing and stuff. All right, so we have a server chassis here. This is the ESC 8000 G3 by Asus. It is a 3U rack mount server chassis. Now you might notice it's got a little bit of a baby bump here in the back, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more later. So it's technically larger than 3U, but this case has a built-in motherboard, air channeling, and a bunch of stuff that we're gonna look at that actually enables it to push a lot of air through it and keep the components cool in a really tight space. Now, Asus was kind enough to supply this chassis for the build to Puget Systems. Now, this particular chassis has six drive bays on the front of it, one of which we're currently using to store a Samsung 950 Pro SSD. This is the storage for the system, and this SSD was provided by Samsung for this build, so thank you to Samsung and Asus for making this possible. God, I love hot swappable stuff. All right, another really cool feature of this case is that it has redundant power supplies. You have three power supplies, each one of them is one thousand watts. Now, two of these power supplies are required at any given point in time to supply power to the entire system, and the third one is purely redundant. If one of these dies, the other one can pick up the slack in real time so the system doesn't go down. Now, the dead power supply, you simply just pull it out like a cassette, no screws or anything, and you can replace it. And again, that is a thousand watt power supply. Now, another thing you might have noticed is that every single PCIe slot in here is full. That is because this system has eight GPUs in it. So why don't we pop off the top and take a look? Now, the one thing that I actually don't like about this particular case is opening up is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Let me explain. There's two screws on the back here that are finger screws that are spring-loaded. Now, my expectation would be I unscrew screw one, I unscrew screw two, and the top would just come off. But no, that is not the case. You have to remove a screw from here. You have to remove a screw from here on both sides. You also have to remove one, two, three, four, five screws from the leading edge. Why are there two just normal spring-loaded? What purpose do these serve? I honestly don't understand. All right, so let's go ahead and take some screws out of this bad boy. There's one, two screw, ooh, ha, 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 ha. Three screw, ooh, ha, 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 ha. Do not lose the screws. These are very, very small screws. These are, these, these are not like the normal screws that you'd use for like a drive bay 
to put in an SSD or something. These are, these are tiny, tiny little guys. All right, so once you take out all of those little screws, then the top slides back and comes off. And I will tell you what, it is heavy. This is a very, very heavy case. This is definitely not a computer you wanna be picking up and lugging around. Now sitting in the back of the chassis, you can see that we have eight graphics cards. These are EVGA GeForce 1060, six gigabyte graphics cards. Now you'll notice that they each require external power from the power supply. Now this external power comes in from the top down, which of course is the reason why we need this lid, which has a giant bulge on it. Now normally these rack mount servers do not have a giant bulging lid, but it's nice that ASUS actually offers that option. And the reason they do is because this case is capable of holding not only 1060s or even 1070s or even 1080s, but you can even fill this thing with Teslas or even higher end graphics cards because of the raw amount of power that this thing can deliver and the airflow, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute. Also, special thanks to EVGA for providing four of the GPUs on this build and Puget System provided the other four. And of course, Puget Systems put this entire thing together, including contacting the companies and getting them on board for this project. Now, when I first posted pictures to Instagram, a lot of people said, how in the hell do you get any airflow through these graphics cards? Well, the simple answer is through brute force. This case is designed to create a very high static pressure. Now, if you look, there's ducting here that has been added. Um, and it's not quite long enough for these short graphics cards, but it's okay with the lid on and everything. It does push a ton of air out the back. And when they used a the FLIR gun to check the internal temperatures of the case, they always stayed within a tolerable level, even with a slight overclock on the cards. Also, if you have full length cards, you can screw them into the actual ductwork to even make it more rigid and to physically connect them together to force the air through. So even though they're all dense packed together, the sheer brute force of the fans, which I'm gonna show you, there's eight of them in here, and they sound like a jetliner when we fire this thing up. Up, will force the air through there, doesn't matter. Tiny crevice, it'll get the air through there. Now you might be wondering, why didn't we go with 1070s, 1080s, or even Titans in this build since we're going for broke and it can support that level of power? The problem is I wanted to go with something that was super efficient. This entire computer, as it sits right now, operates between 600 and 800 watts. Now we would be blowing that out of the water if we want the 1080s or the Titans. Now the 1060s, I understand, is one of the most energy efficient cards versus the current Ethereum hash rate on the six gigabyte version. So this was obviously the card to go with. Also, if you do the math, eight of these cards can do a fair bit of damage in both rendering and passing benchmarks. Now you're obviously not gonna be using this system for gaming because SLI isn't gonna support eight cards. So if you guys are wondering, why didn't you just go with three Titans? It's because of energy efficiency, guys. So if you're thinking, hey bro, why didn't you go with a couple of Titans, man? Gaming machine, this is not a gaming machine. This is a rendering machine that also does Ethereum mining in its downtime and is gonna be used for some machine learning projects later on. Nothing more, this is not a gaming machine. If you guys start putting down in the comments that I need to run benchmarks on Crisis and stuff like that, just simmer down, calm your tits. Ain't gonna happen. Well, unless you hit the like button, then maybe I'll just do it on principle. All right, so as we move forward in the case, you see that this is just a big piece of plastic, but what is impressive is what is under the plastic. Let's go ahead and take this shroud off and take a look. Of course, it's more of these tiny little screws. Do not lose these little screws. There were a bunch of spares included with the system, probably because everybody loses these things because you could literally inhale them. I'll tell you what, for a case that has power supplies that just pop out of it with one finger, this is a lot of work to take this thing apart. All right, let's take a look inside. Eh, eh, you gotta be real gentle with it. There we go. All right, so as you can see, that is an airfoil. What that is is a tunnel to keep all the air in line from these massive fans. Now you can see there's not one, but there are two rows of fans and these things are incredibly thick and incredibly powerful. The amount of air that the system moves through this channel is insane. You could just put your hand behind this thing. Even with all the blockage of everything in here, including the graphics cards downstream, it still is like a blow dryer coming out the back. So this duct right here is just for air moving down and through the PCIe cards to cool everything down, the GPUs primarily. Now this system is equipped with not one, but two E5 2637V4 Xeon processors. Now that's a little bit of a mouthful and they're both sitting underneath these shrouds, which ducked in air from these smaller, but still very thick and very powerful fans. So the CPUs have their own airflow completely separate from the airflow that's going through the chassis to the PCIe cards. And I think that's one of the things that makes this case really awesome. Now it also provides air moving through to cool the memory, which in this case is 64 gigabyte of crucial ECC RAM, which was provided by, you guessed it, Crucial. Sponsorship, baby. Now, all of the memory in the system is DDR4. It's quick stuff, but the ECC and registered is a requirement of the Xeons. And it basically protects you against parity errors so that if you have any kind of act of God or lightning storm or something like that, God forbid you have any corrupted data. And let's not forget the guy that built the system, Mr. Houston, otherwise known 
is Dr. Professor Beardosaur right there. There's his signature. You can see he can't write very good. That's why he builds computers. All right, so now you've seen the inside of my new server. We have eight freaking GPUs, two Xeons, 64 gigs of RAM, an awesome Samsung 950 Pro SSD, 3,000 watts of power potential, which obviously I don't have anything in my house that can even provide that without having to go to two separate circuits. So I'm just running currently off two of the power supplies, but it does have that capability. And this thing is loud as hell. Are you guys ready to hear it? Let me go ahead and button it up, get all the shrouding back on it. And we're gonna fire it up. And you guys are gonna see just how ridiculously loud this thing can be. All right, she's all put back together. We went ahead and downloaded a decibel meter for the iPhone, because I want you guys to see how truly loud this is. Right now, the ambient noise and the room is 55 decibels. All right, let's go ahead and back up, fire this bad boy up. Right now we're showing 104, 104, 107. You can clearly see it's 104. Now it will calm down. Once it posts video and it gets through post, it'll get much quieter, wait for it. Now we're sitting at 70. Actually, when I talk, the decibels come up, so it's, it's not even as loud as me talking. So now, we're at 75 decibels. But you can see the system has the potential for a massive amount of airflow, but as it needs more airflow, because of the heat inside of the case, it's gonna get much, much louder. And I will tell you, at full trot at over 100 decibels, it is loud. Now, since I've received the machine, I've been using it to mine Ethereum, which is a cryptocurrency that uses all eight of the GPUs to hash. And this machine so far at the current market value has been producing between 15 and $18 a day and profit from Ethereum, which I think is absolutely awesome. But that does mean the machine that costs $12,000 is gonna take a very long time to pay for itself. And cryptocurrency is a risky venture, but it is a lot of fun. And it's a cool way to make a little money during the downtime of your computer when it's not doing something else. Mine away, my pretty. Mine. So if you guys have any other questions about the server build, leave them down below in the comments or come over and tweet me at Barnacles over on Twitter. Now we are gonna do some follow-up videos with the server showing both benchmark performance and cryptocurrency mining potential and even some videos showing you how to set up cryptocurrency mining with so many GPUs. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. It's one in a series of many. And I would like to thank Puget Systems once again for bringing this whole project together. They got Intel on board to provide the Xeons. They got Crucial on board to supply all of the memory for the build. They got Samsung on board to supply the SSD, Asus to supply the very expensive chassis and the motherboard, and of course EVGA supplied four of the eight GPUs and Puget Systems picked up the bill for the other four, totaling one entirely badass system that has literally no business being in here, but I'm glad it does. All right, it's time to mine me some imaginary currency on the internet. Come on, Ethereum. It's payday time. All right, take it easy, guys. Till next time. They're good. Oh, sh oh no! What? I just stepped on the case and f bent it. Oh, sh it was right. Oh, f me, dude. I cannot believe I did that. Hold on. I cannot f***ing believe I did that. Yeah, no, this actually looks okay. I can't believe I did that, dude. That hurt too. Might have to put that on the outtakes. <laughs> oh, sh all right, show me the framing.